So we're uh, shifting gears completely with the previous talk. Uh, this will be uh, more or less technical and more or less uh, only applicable to people who are interested in doing technical and, and um, uh, work on a terminal. So very different. <laughs> Uh, so who am I? Uh, Pierre David already said all of this. I guess the only thing I really want to plug here is Montre Hack, which is our uh, monthly security uh, trainings where we focus on doing hands-on uh, CTF exercises. The, the other stuff is already plugged besides the Hacker Jeopardy, which I will uh, host uh, on Saturday. So if you never w came to the Hacker Jeopardy, you should come. It's, uh, it's free for everyone who is attending NordSec. Uh, Francois is really proud. He's uh, uh, assisting <laughs> me. We've been doing this for five years. It's a, it's a blast. It's really fun to do and it's really fun to attend, I think. Uh, you go. And yeah, for me, uh, basically, Pierre David uh, just read my bio, so that's basically it for me. Uh, Polyac, uh, West Montreal, and uh, PolyMTL. It's, that's basically it. All right, so today we'll see uh, why, what, uh, where, and uh, say, say what, what? <laughs> of, uh, of our talk. So. Since uh, uh, building uh, machines take a while, like building complete Windows machines from scratch take a while, our demo is actually at the beginning of the talk, and you'll see the results at the end of the talk. Uh, so this is how we decided to do it. Let's just open up the, the, the shell here. Thank you. Can I help you with that? Yep. So uh, here. Oh. Did it work? Nope, I have no internet. <laughs> I think I should have internet in a few seconds. So basically it works. <laughs> oh, All right. Nice. So here we go. This is the tool. And now we're, we're going to start it. And, uh, and now back to the talk. This was the demo. Uh, we'll see the result at the end. <laughs> All right, so was there any questions? <laughs> it's a cool tool. Thank you, thank you. All right, so uh, why are we uh, building this? Oh. Uh, okay, I mean, <laughs> nice. I need, so I had no internet when I, I loaded the slide deck, so I need to refresh so. the whole thing. It's really funny, so you, you really want to see it? Oh, good. So here's the context. This is how we do malware analysis right now. It's manual. We throw tons of people at it, a lot of resources. Its individual tasks are relatively boring. And yet, it is very impressive. Huge companies have, are building a whole, uh, whole you know, business model around it. And we really, malware uh, industry really secures people. I know it's not trendy to say it right now, but I strongly believe that AV is kind of the, the belt uh, in a car. You need, you need one. You know, you need, everyone has it. It's mandatory. And, and yeah, so that's the way I feel about it. But stuff like this, Go Secure cannot afford that. Like AV companies can afford that. So what I needed to do in order to scale at work is we needed to improve the tool chain in order to be able to do analysis quicker and spend less time micromanaging uh, virtual machines. And so this is what the, this talk is about. So for customization of the VM, uh, it's kind of the same story here. Uh, we have uh, vanilla XP VMs, or more recent version, if you want to analyze a 64-bit uh, sample. But it, that's basically the main story here. Uh, we see that a lot. No trace of a, pe a previous user. You don't have files. You don't have browser history. You don't have emails. You don't have anything on it. It's basically just uh, an empty PC uh, that has no, no user that, that uh, has never been uh, inside of it. So you have to manually customize uh, your PC. And it's really uh, time consuming. Uh, it's really non-technical. So you just basically waste time. And it can lead to cross-infected VMs. Uh, and you can't build or reuse templates at all. You have to rebuild uh, the whole system uh, all over again uh, when you try to do basically the same thing. And uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, it's really time consuming. And we could do uh, much better. 
I have a problem. I need to restart the whole deck. And there goes my joke. And there goes your joke. Yeah, so basically, uh, we would recommend uh, ASCII doc reveal GS uh, backend. It's really good. Uh, he's one of the maintainers, so uh, yeah, it works really great. <laughs> All right, now go on with your joke. Okay, so it's time consuming, and basically, the 90s call, and they want their mythology back. And uh, they're, uh, I have a funny GIF. <laughs> uh, so other problems with malware analysis is it's not easily accessible to newcomers. So most of the people getting into the, this field, they need to uh, get a book, which is called Practical Malware Analysis. They need to read through it. And then they, they need to understand that they need to be really careful with live samples, that you cannot trust a VM once it's, it's infected, and so on. So it's easy to mess things up. Teamwork is also hard. Uh, the tools don't encourage it. Either Pro is not able to do any collaboration. There's not even a goddamn Control Z in that on that tool, <laughs> which is, I mean, in 2016, completely idiotic. But it's it's there and, and it's what we use. So uh, um, sharing VMs is also like uh, sending files to each other and like, oh yeah, the sample is in that folder. Oh yeah, but oh you like that tool? Oh no, it's not installed on my VMs. I don't use the Fiddler. I use like Wireshark out of the VM. So it's, it's really just uh, pain in the butt, in the neck. <laughs> uh, so uh, building a credible environment is time consuming, as Hugo was saying. Also, there are several ways to make, mess things up. Like if you install IDA inside your, your VM and the malware happens to be stealing IDA licenses, then oh, you leaked an IDA license to the whole internet. And everyone you meet at conferences tells you, oh, thank you for the IDA license, by the way, that was leaked from your company. <laughs> so a lack of integrated or enforced best practices can lead to le uh, leaks like that. Now, when you deal with uh, 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 VM problems, this is how, where's my cursor? This is how you feel like. So it, re it requires skills. So oh, you foresee the problem. What do I need to do? How should I react? OK. <laughs> now I can fix this problem. That's perfect. Took me some time. And it's applicable only to one environment, one situation. Oh, yeah, I managed that. Okay, yeah, good. I'm right. good. <laughs> I'll be able to continue. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Okay, next debug, step, step. Oh, shit, another problem. <laughs> what do I do? Okay, oh, I can figure this out. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> so we feel like heroes. Like, <laughs> this is really the way we've been working. And it, it feels great. That's why we're, it's, the statue quo is still here. And one other problem is uh, malware auditors uh, really want to know if they're being tracked or not. Uh, so there are a couple of ways to do that. One of them is an anti-VM like Red Pill, SLDT instruction. So just uh, they kind of get uh, their inside a virtual machine. There are probably analysis behind that. So j they just want they just don't want to run uh, on that exit. And then uh, it's n nothing has been done. It's it's not a malware. Uh, but now uh, some of them are not reliable in multi-core systems and uh, when acceleration is deactivated in virtual machine. So uh, actually uh, they're kind of uh, non, uh, non, uh, always applicable. So other uh, tricks, you can uh, have anti-debugging. You can have uh, debugger plugins to just uh, pass that through, and uh, the software, the malware doesn't see anything. So the anti-debuggers uh, are completely useless. But what about system fingerprinting? Is there really tools for that? And that's what we we tried to 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 get to. Uh, if uh, what's the next step uh, if you, the VM? Uh, is installed in an office and uh, in companies, virtualization uh, on the desktop is getting uh, more and more popular. So if you want to infect a VM, you don't want anti-VM. Anti so what you can do is fingerprint the system if it's a, a good system to infect or not. Another thing is it's one shot, one kill uh, for APD research or uh, basically 
uh, you don't want to waste your time or your IP uh, if if it's not uh, rea realistic. Uh, you just could uh, get banned. Your IP just blacklisted, and then you get uh, nothing from from the CNC. And so it. it it wastes a lot of time uh, another time. So it has to be credible and has to be fast, and you have to make it uh, worth the first time you get uh, into it. So now that you saw the demo, what have you built? <laughs> um, so we were inspired by the DevOps principle. So why should the DevOps people have all the fun? They are building great tools that changes traditional IT. No one is looking back. Like I, I heard of no one saying, oh yeah, the old way of doing system administration is nice. I take care of seven servers and I'm a full-time employee, a sysadmin, and uh, I love this thing. But uh, DevOps has uh, applied a lot to Linux server, but what, uh, uh, what is going on on the wi Windows ecosystem? Luckily, things have changed lately. So yeah, you go, uh, so, yeah. why DevOps? So why DevOps? Uh, basically, one of the core principles of DevOps is infra infrastructure as code. So basically, like uh, Olivier gave me an example, like Git, and you just uh, want to make something that is, uh, you can reproduce. So basically, if you do it one time, you, can be, uh, you, you are able to do it uh, every time. So you just don't have to do it all over again. Uh, every way, uh, every now and then. So uh, it's also you can also throw away your VM, and then you have uh, all the tools to build that really fast uh, another time. And so it's really more efficient, and that's what we want to bring to malware analysis. So uh, continuing on our train <laughs> analogy, uh, let's see uh, what is uh, our inspiration if we're, we're talking about building railroads. So this machine is building railroads. It was engineered by someone who took a lot of time to make ra railroad building easier and faster. So you, the human now, instead of 80 humans running around, there's now one guy who is inventing work. He has nothing to do. He's like sweeping dust to look like he's <laughs> busy doing something. And this is exactly what I want when I build analysis machine. I want to see a, sh a terminal who is working and installing the tools for me, and I don't want to be doing anything. I want to be checking my emails, looking up on Twitter, getting, reading the latest APT report I don't have time to read. Yeah. I don't want to be clicking next, next, next through all the tools I need to install in my VM. So we need to build something like that, or we built something like that for malware analysis. So yeah, basically checking Twitter and checking emails is basically the malware analysis job. So you just want to do that and just being Come concentrated on. on that. He was an intern at the uh, work. He didn't. Yeah. Do, we didn't give him any I just real did for tasks. Months, so yeah. So yeah, you're a Twitter expert, social media expert now. Is that yeah? It? All right. So what architecture did we use? Well, we reused existing Dev DevOps tools. So the um, the the base image builder is Packer. Uh, which is a HashiCorp open source, it's all open source and free, of course. Uh, then we use Vagrant to do the reproducible and uh, operating environments and to manage, if you want, the uh, infrastructure. This is all running on top of VirtualBox. So uh, the VMs are, you have a GUI on your desktop when you spin the VM, when you build it. And uh, you can do, once you have built with Packer one uh, image, which takes half an hour uh, and a full disk I.O. for uh, half an hour because Windows, uh, you know, needs a lot of I.O. to install. Um, after this, you can do a Vagrant up, which is a, a, a snapshot, a quick on disk copy, takes no space, and you can have several analysis in parallel. So leveraging all existing tools. And for uh, remote management and, and um, install tools inside the VM, we use PowerShell uh, through uh, WinRM for Windows remote management. Two years ago, all of this wouldn't have, wouldn't have been possible. Vagrant didn't work on Windows. Packer didn't work on Windows. So uh, I, 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 uh, I looked at this thing. I, I had this idea a few years ago, but now I re reinvestigated it uh, last um, October and uh, last November, and it was possible now. And I even borrowed some configs of uh, Mark Andrew Dwyer's uh, who built uh, the Packer malware repository. And it, basically, I stole his unattendconfig.xml because I'm not a Windows person, so I didn't know anything. They weren't working for Windows 7, so I adapted them, but still, I, he really helped because it, he, he got me started. 
Another giant where we, uh, we are on top of is Chocolate, which is the APT get for Windows. Now our, our tools is bootstrapping a Chocolate install, and then we use all Chocolate packages to install sys internal tools, WinDBG, and all of the stuff, Fiddler, and all of the stuff we need to use. So this is all thanks to the giants that we are standing on. And the, the thing is, why are we the first to do it? I think no one cared because everyone likes to be the hero, the one throwing the, you know, the, 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 the wood and saving the day. And so no one has done that before. And because malware analysis is such a niche environment that it's, it was not really you know, useful or anything, people prefer to do, manage their VM their own way. Uh, so tools are automatically installed based on profiles, which uh, are part of the, of the tools. And uh, we uh, install all of this, which I already mentioned. So this list is just only limited by your imagination, and you could customize it. And it, I mean, this is all open source. So now, dealing with VM problems looks like this. Whoops, the GIF will rotate, and you will understand the <laughs> beginning of it. <laughs> but so when you have a problem, what you do is you either restart from scratch, or you plow through it. You just don't care. It's, it's not, your VM is not a cute kitten, it's a cattle. You kill it and you get another one. So this is a concept of the DevOps industry about killing cattle and you know, petting kittens. Anyway. So what you can do with that uh, afterwards is put your malware in, into context. So basically, it uh, maybe behaves differently in uh, different environments, if it has a domain attached to it, if it has a couple of VMs. Uh, so you want to, to build that uh, as efficiently as possible. So if you know, uh, for example, the target of the APD you're, you're trying to track, you don't want to have a VM that looks like a, uh, like a, a vanilla one. You, are, you want to have a, a VM that basically looks like a, a, an employee of, the, of a Russian company or government or something like that. So you want to put your malware into context, and when the bad guys uh, arrive, uh, they, they just see uh, smoke, and they're basically, oh yeah, that's the one uh, we want to, to be on, so we're going to put stage two on that, and then you get another sample, and your research is better. And do that as, in as little time as possible. So what are the use cases? Uh, one of the example, uh, one of uh, the investigation I did uh, last summer at ESET uh, was uh, Win32 Sandy Kostek, uh, when w did uh, manual recon. It lists a lot of things. It did uh, last open files, directories, what's on the desktop, and uh, ran system info to get uh, install date, hardware info. So basically, uh, and in a couple of minutes, uh, manual recon, they had a backdoor on the system. They knew it, it was an analysis VM, just exited, and uh, nobody got nothing. So we were, uh, that's pretty disappointing for a researcher. Another thing is operation fingerprinting by, uh, that's been done by Malwarebytes. Uh, it's uh, the Angular exploit kit that uh, fingerprinted the system with path names. Uh, they looked for shared drives, they looked for Active Directory, and things like that. So things that would uh, normally be in, uh, in a real environment. And if it wasn't, they just uh, exited or uh, put something else that wasn't uh, as cool as you would expect. Another use case I mentioned earlier is uh, team analysis. So of course, as any conference-driven open source development, some things are left undone, so this is one of the cases. But it's just a matter of putting the right vagrant comments. So it's not even our, our tool's fault, because once the image is built, it's more a manage of a, a workflow. But I still want the workflow documented, and I should take some time to document it properly in the, co the coming weeks. Uh, but the idea is you have your vagrant file ins inside of your Git repository. Your Git is associated with an investigation, and you can share your Git three easily. Vagrant file is only a, a text file. And uh, the Vagrant boxes are, are hosted on an HTTP, any HTTP server. And then someone can clone your analysis tree and then Vagrant, Vagrant up your analysis and be inside your virtual machine with the malware sample inside of it. So this is only a matter of time before it's documented in our repo. So how can you, can you get this? You want this now. So I have an anti-Viperware statement to make. 
because I dislike uh, most of the, not most, but often projects that are, are um, uh, discussed at security conferences, you never get to see the code. Or academia is also guilty of that. They always say, yeah, yeah, look at the code, and then you need to send them a Twitter uh, or shame them on Twitter to say, where is the code? And then they say, oh, yeah, we just need to clean up a few things. It's been one year, man. Come on, clean it up. So what we decided to do is we're tired of this trend in InfoSec, and we released the tool even before our talk. So like a few months ago, I created the repository. We committed all of, us, of uh, the stuff already there. Yep. And you know what? Everyone should be doing this instead of hiding it and waiting to push the public publish button. No one will find your kitten project, you know. Uh, just do it in the open and deal with it. And as you can see, it's on the GoSecure repo. Uh, Olivier has a couple of followers, and nobody noticed. Uh, we got nobody to, to talk about it. So basically, nobody cared. No one told us our baby is ugly. Um, so, uh, how does the, the thing work? Well, uh, we call it mailboxes. So, uh, you use mailbox to uh, build a profile, and then, I'm sorry, I'm stealing your slide, I ah, see that. It's okay. Then uh, it builds a vagrant box for you, and then you spin a vagrant file using, again, mailboxes to create a vagrant file for you, which is tailored to your analysis. The available, av available commands that, um, to customize the, the profiles are the following. So, yeah, that's what we have now uh, that's been implemented. Uh, basically, the, four, uh, the, the first four ones, uh, registry, document, directory, package, or to customize the VM beforehand. So you create a profile that outputs a, power, a PowerShell script before you spin up, uh, you spin up the VM. So basically, uh, you just, uh, it's on the README, uh, basic commands, you just uh, type mailboxes, registry, and then the arguments that you want, and uh, it's, it modifies the profile that you want to apply to the VM. And then you have build and spin, so build uh, builds the virtual box image for the VM, and then you just spin it to create a vagrant file that you can keep, and uh, that's basically a link to the box, the vagrant box, and then you just, uh, you can and uh, spin it up uh, everywhere you want. So let's look at the output of, uh, of uh, our previously built uh, VM. So here we are. Here we are. And so this is what happened. As you can see here, we installed like sysinternal tools and several like uh, putty and stuff like that. And this is all happened, you know, in the background without us having to do anything. And it's ready. Like, you, you put in your sample, you uh, create the uh, port forwards for IDA to do remote debugging, and then boom, that's it. You have your new VM. Um, I wanted this really accessible. So the way we, uh, we build the, the, the default profile is right now the Windows 10 image is a Windows 10 evaluation version. So you don't even need the product key or a license. It will, the license is okay for 90 days. And it's not, you don't even need to have the ISO file. I put in the, the, the URL of the ISO. So you do have a um, uh, mailboxes build of a Windows 10 analysis profile. And you will get a half an hour after, depending on your download speed, uh, a full Windows 10 VM evaluation with all the tools installed ready to infect. So I think this is really good to get new people started at malware analysis and be less scared of leaking stuff or being infected. So this is useful to reduce art and augment science. Get new people in malware analysis and improve workflow of seasoned uh, analysis, analysts and teams. So where? Where was uh, harder to fit in these W's? But so we figured we, we, <laughs> we should say, where is this headed? So um, we are going to implement anti-VM detection tricks. So this was not done yet. So it's, oh, the slides. Thank you, Laurent. <laughs> People are really shy. So did I have any uh, good jokes on that one before? Oh, yeah, where? Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anti-VM detection definitely must go in there because VirtualBox is a pretty common environment to fingerprint for malware, and, uh, uh, malware authors like Hugo mentioned. We want to have higher level construct to build interesting targets. Active directory integration is starting to be important. Uh, some malware will not uh, do anything if you are on an Active Directory environment, which is interesting. 
And the opposite is also true. So some crimeware will refuse to infect the company and will focus on home users. So it's a, a thing to, to have in mind. Generate honey documents based on a theme would be interesting. Uh, we want to document the, the work, team workflow, like I said. And this is all in the to-do. So if anyone here wants to look at it and hack on it, uh, something that I haven't mentioned, I haven't tested it on Windows, so we'll, we definitely will have issues on Windows. But they're mo they should be all solvable because Packer, Vagrant, and all of the giants we are sitting on works on uh, Vagrant. So with that said, let's get to work. If we want to fight things chance against the bad guys, we need to stop losing time on shenanigans like next, next, next and building uh, VMs. And we need to start sharing images. So if you have a Vagrant box that is one zip file with the sample and your IDB inside, you can send it to some analyst of another company and then, and then work together and, and stop just like uh, seeing these things uh, as kitten and see it as the cattle that um, they are. So just before the end, I wanted to thank uh, some, some people that helped me. Uh, Joan Calvé for tips and help, thank you. Uh, Marc Etienne for suggestions, and he's the one that linked me to Olivier and made that possible. Uh, Julian Bremer, I uh, worked on VM Cloak beforehand, and basically uh, I think the new tool is, is better, so uh, we're trying to, to work on that. Jose Fernandez for sponsorship, uh, Jesse Campos for pushing me, and basically friends, uh, family and girlfriend for support, so yeah. And I'm thankful to no one. So any, any of you got questions, uh, suggestions, tips? This is our last train gift.